Okay, good morning uh, to ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Breakfast UM Health Webinar Series 51. I am Dr. Lai Li Yi. I am the moderator for today's session. I would like to introduce our speaker, Madam Nohanita Zaini. Madam Nohanita Zaini is a lecturer at Department of Nursing Science. She obtained her Bachelor of Degree in Nursing in 2006 from UPM and her Master's Degree in nursing from UN in year 2012. She just passed her PhD YWA. Her expert area is emergency nursing and coronary care nursing. Without further ado, I would like to invite Madam Nohanita to present her PhD study project finding about effectiveness of a web-based education application on psychological symptoms and pain following coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Without further ado, okay, Madam Hanita, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Lai, for your kind introduction. Assalamualaikum and very good morning uh, to all. My name is Nur Hanita Zaini. I am from Department of Nursing Science, Faculty of Medicine. The title of my talk today, uh, I will share my screen, right? Okay. The title of my talk today is an effectiveness of a web-based education application on psychological symptom and pain following coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Okay, this is my supervisor. Cardiovascular disease are the leading cause of death in the worldwide and also in Malaysia. One of the intervention for coronary artery disease is a coronary artery bypass graft surgery. <clears throat> Okay, patient undergoing uh, this type of surgery facing emotional, cognitive and physiologi physiological, which is patient think about risk of death, think about permanently disabled, uh, they are worried in terms of inability to wake up uh, from any desire and also pain. Even though this type of surgery is routine performed by cardiothoracic surgeon and also they are used technological advance, but this procedure still evoke anxiety and depression to the patient. So results from numerous studies demonstrate that this feeling can be minimized with the detailed preoperative education. Unfortunately, there are no guidelines or standards for how best to educate patients undergoing cardiac surgery, for example, CABG. So when I look at the current practice now, in a 6U, patient undergoing for CABG admitted to 6U is a multidisciplinary cases. That's why the, uh, the nurses give general information about surgery and there are no education resources given to the patient, especially patient discharge uh, from the hospital. So since uh, Malaysia population are majority using a smartphone, so I decided to, to do this study. So the objective of this study to evaluate the effect of a web-based education application on psychological symptom and pain following patient undergoing CABG. And also I would like to assess the user's level of satisfaction, perceived helpfulness toward web-based education application. So the finding of literature review, I found that preoperative education give positive outcome to the patient, which is it can reduce the anxiety, depression, and also pain to the patient. So this study consists of three phases by using a two design, uh, cross-sectional study and also quasi-experimental study. For the phase one, okay, uh, this is a cross-sectional study, which is Einstein developed and verified a web-based education application, which is the data collection is uh, within one year, start from August 2000. Uh, 15, uh, August uh, 2014 to August 2015, which is I select patient undergoing for CABG surgery who are admitted at the 6U surgery ward, and which is I select the patient according to simple random sampling, and the total sample size I should get is 186. So the inclusion and exclusion criteria I get from previous study, which is I'm focused to all patients undergoing CABG surgery who have uh, who have a smartphone or Android with internet connection. So patient who underwent valve surgery, who have emergency uh, condition, uh, and then who have psychiatric diagnosis, they were excluded from my study. So the instrument that I will use for my study, which include cardiac patient learning needs inventory, which I want to know what's the information 
information they want and uh, number two is hospital anxiety and depression scale which is I measure the anxiety and uh, depression level brief pain inventory short form which is I measure the pain severity and also pain interference Patient satisfaction on education app. I measure satisfaction towards the uh, web-based education application. And lastly, I will screen uh, the patient uh, by using mini mental state examination, which is I noticed that all patients undergoing CABG surgery mostly are elderly. So uh, the result from this uh, study has shown that Total 178 of patients participate in my study, which is the main age of the respondent is 57. Majority are male, married, and also mostly are Chinese. And patients who have a uh, own uh, smartphone is around 74%, 132 participants, and primary caregiver who have a smartphone around 127 uh, participants. And uh, to measure the level of anxiety and pain, we can see here that 89% uh, of my patients having moderate of anxiety and 60% of uh, respondents having a mild depression. However, for the pain severity, 49% of respondents having mild pain severity and 75% of respondents report that patients have pain interference. So according to the learning need, I can see that all my patients highly need for learning needs, 63% highly need for learning needs, which is they are choose other pertinent information. They, are, they want me to emphasize on wound care, pain, and also medication. So based on this uh, result, I start develop this uh, education uh, material. So the entire development process of application, I'm using this uh, model, ED model, which is, is include five phases, analysis, design, development, implementation, and also evaluation. In analysis phase, I start uh, develop, I start identify the problem facing by the patient through the interview and also from the result from uh, result phase one. And then uh, the, for the design phase, in addition, I'm using Adobe Photoshop and I'm with Maker to make the video more interesting. And implementation phase, I start deliver uh, this education uh, by using uh, Android and also iPhone. And also uh, the patient could be freely accessed by using Chrome 76. So at the end, I start evaluate this type of education, which is I do concurrent with uh, implementation uh, survey, implementation phase. I start distribute the question and in terms of satisfaction. So uh, there are three times I'm do amendment for this uh, content. So at last, uh, I get a good result for the uh, for this uh, education. So. This is my education, I call as a My Education CABG application, which is you have a six main menu, your heart, coronary artery disease, CABG, uh, preparation of surgery, recovery planning support, and also diary online. And these are the details of my pre-operative education. So your heart, uh, which include I cover on structure and function of the heart, coronary artery disease, I cover with a CAD, angina, MI, symptom, risk factor, and a type of coronary intervention. CABG is under uh, is focused on bypass CD overview uh, and preparation of surgery. I'm focused to before, during, after CABG, which is what they need to know, uh, what they need uh, to do. Okay, and for the recovery planning support in more to self care, I'm teach in terms of wound care, how to clean, how to take care of the wound pain and also deep breathing exercise. And what's special about this uh, education, which is I include diary online, which is uh, I'm add on the mood of the patient and also pain severity and location. So if you can see that my education, I can implement at all mobile phone and also at the PC, which is here, this uh, uh, screen of my, appear screen uh, of my, uh, my education set, uh, CABG mode and also the location of uh, PIN. So uh, I'm settled with the phase one. Now I'm start implementing my education CABG application by using this uh, design, quasi experimental design. So uh, I select all patients undergoing for CABG surgery for the first time 
and then patient and all caregiver who have a smartphone and Android with internet connection, patient ability to speak, read and write Malay and English language. So, execution criteria is similar with the phase one. Oh yeah, for this uh, uh, phase, I'm using conservative uh, sampling because uh, patient in uh, surgery ward, they are... Uh, the uh, patient in surgery what they are, are coming uh, anytime okay so i'm start with control first and finish with the uh, intervention so for the control this is standard care they are received which is uh, they are receive a visit from the ns and also surgeon one or two days before surgery there are no resources given to the patient and the nurses uh, give information based on a uh, uh, patient asking and also patient also going for CI, a cicu to a visit What's the special about the intervention? Uh, two days before surgery and of monitoring, I start implement, I start deliver this my education CFG application, which is I optimize through the smartphone. And also uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I'm doing a face-to-face -face, uh, oral explanation and advice. And also at the same time, I'm sharing with the patient. So this is flow of my study. I think the journey of patient undergoing CABG uh, admitted to the ward, uh, surgery ward is quite similar with other uh, hospital, which is a uh, patient uh, who are met my inclusion uh, criteria, where I will approach to join this study. So uh, once I get permission from the sister, so I start distribute this questionnaire, which is I measure their anxiety, depression, pain, and also I'm doing uh, screening for the uh, cognitive level. So all these things happen in the surgery ward. And then uh, and after finish all, I start giving uh, my education CABG application for the intervention group. And then time of discharge, I will meet patient and again uh, do the uh, survey. I mean, uh, they collect the data again, time of discharge. And one month after patient surgery, I will meet patient at cardiothoracic clinic to measure again their anxiety, depression, and also pain. At the same time, I'm also uh, assess their satisfaction using this application. So the result, we can see that uh, 170 of patients participate in my study. The social demographic show that uh, all patients, uh, sorry, uh, this the social, we can see that there is no significant difference for social demographic uh, factor and clinical characteristics except for gender and also medical comorbidities. And if we look at this uh, plot, I can say that uh, uh, the adjusted mean level uh, of anxiety are uh, increased for the treatment group, for the intervention group, pre-operative day, and significantly lower at post-operative one month. And we look at the mean difference uh, level of anxiety between intervention group and control group, uh, the result showed negative one. 0.81, which is the p-value is less than 0 0.01. It means there is no, uh, there is significant difference between the, the group. And this figure show that uh, the post-operative uh, time of discharge is picked for the uh, intervention group and also the control group, but it's significantly dropped to post-operative one month, contrast with the control group. However, for the pain severity, there is no changes for both groups, which is uh, you can see that uh, the pre-operative day time and discharge and post-operative there are no changes, which is there are no significant difference. And uh, for pain interference, I can show that uh, the initial for pre-operative day intervention group is highest and significantly drop to post-operative one mind. So uh, I can say that for the phase two, uh, my study show that uh, this intervention affects to the anxiety, depression, and also pain interference. For of respondent, we can see here that eighty nine percent of respondents satisfied with the content of uh, education application. One month, we can see that there is a changes. Which at the end, patient look calm. One month, when I see the the diary, patient look calm and also uh, happy with the uh, with the apps. Yeah. 
So as a discussion, I can say that patient in both group had higher anxiety and depression level at the time of admission to hospital than those level at the time of discharge and one month after discharge. So uh, in this study, participants significantly lower mean post-operative state of anxiety and depression score are considered a result from my web-based uh, application education that they receive. So according to this author, they, state that, that they stated that Pre-operative education through web-based education app provided by nurses based on individual requirement reduce all the psychological symptoms and physiological illness of patients undergoing for CABD surgery. And the participant in this intervention group were satisfied with the design, content, and usability. Usability, however, they are uh, from my uh, organization. Uh, they said that uh, majority of them found preoperative through phone was friendly and practical, but challenges also for the uh, elderly. So. Uh, what I want to highlight here that the intervention has beneficial effect to the psychological symptom and pain interference following patient undergoing CABG surgery. So since all uh, national population are using the smartphone, so I think this education app as side driver for CABG patient at home and also can create responsibility for self-care. So we also as nurses who are working in the uh, hospital able to monitor progress patient at home. And also according to national symbol, which is I found the code of ethics and eh, in understanding of of care, they emphasize that patient education is a legal duty of nurses. Nurses must give correct information and education to each patient according to the need. So I realized uh, that uh, at the end of study, I'm, I noticed that uh, the limitation, uh, limitation of my study, I not uh, identify the term of sources of anxiety and depression and also difficult for me also to do the randomized because patient in uh, locate I mean the location of the ward is multi cases because uh, this ward have uh, include patient with uh, undergoing general surgery vascular burn so it's very difficult for me to do randomized because we are worried in term of contamination and I, in addition okay patient education also is not suitable to do a randomized because um, intervention group can can communicate with the control group so uh, as a conclusion, I can say that my education CABG application as a tool that equips patients with a better mindset and will help them cope with psychological symptoms and pain during hospitalized and post-discharge. So that's all my reference. I want to take this opportunity to express my special appreciation to all my supervisor, Prof. Dr. Ketija, uh, Prof. Dr. Sharul Bakya Kamarzaman and Associate Professor Dr. Karutan Jina for the voluble uh, advice and also guidance for me. They inspire me to work hard to do this study. <clears throat> I would like also to thanks to Professor Dr. Raji Amir Raja Mukta and also all the CTS team for giving me opportunity to collect the data uh, to, to, uh, to do this study. Uh, thank you also to Prof. Dr. Anwar Suhaimi and also Matron Staff Nurse in Surgery Ward and Surgery to look at my content also and also give idea. And um, last but not least, uh, to my head of department, Professor Dr. Chong Mei Chan, and also all Team NSC for your continuous support to me throughout my study. And finally, my family member, my husband, my late mother for giving me, uh, for understand and uh, pray for me and giving me a full of love. So thank you so much and Happy New Year 2022. Okay, thank you, Madam Hanita. That is an interesting topic. Right? Yeah, it is very uh, useful to have web based, uh, based in education to monitor the patient psychology symptoms and pain following the coronary uh, bypass graft surgery. Okay, uh, now is a, a QA session. Yeah, we see whether i uh, got people asking a question or not. Yeah? Let me check the uh, QA answer box. Yeah, okay. There is a question from uh, Professor Dr. Chong Mei Chan. Yeah, the question is there is lots of online material for patient education available. Uh, why do you need to develop a new one? 
Okay, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Prof Chong. Yes, uh, I noticed that is a lot of uh, material available in online platform, but uh, what is my uh, special uh, education, which is uh, I'm focused on uh, my, my education uh, include a bilingual version, BM, Malay and also language, which is, is suitable with the local setting. And also, uh, usually in online platform, material in online platform, they are more uh, uh, text, okay, compared with my uh, version, more to diagram, which is, I noticed that my patient is elderly, so I need to include a lot of diagram and also video in terms of, I mean, I need to, to them to understand uh, how to take care of themselves, actually for, for the wound incision. Okay, uh, there is a question uh, from Dr. Lee Wanling. Yeah? Actually, this question also I want to ask, but seeing Dr. Lee asking, so I, I will not ask you after this. Okay, Dr. Lee's question is, do you encounter the challenges in getting patients to use uh, the apps regularly? Uh, could you share your experience? Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for the question. Okay, uh, yeah, initial plan, I want to do the smartphone application because I noticed that majority of Malaysia population are using the smartphone. So I want to do that, okay? But because of the costing is around 15K, so, uh, and also the challenges that I'm facing in terms of technical, so we uh, have a meeting with our committee, so we decide to change the web-based uh, application, which is, is more uh, patient-free, uh, can be accessed uh, anytime, any place. Uh, that's that, that's uh, the challenges that I'm facing on that. Yeah, that's the most uh, uh most uh, most I mean main challenges uh, that I'm facing. Okay, we have another question from the anonymous attendee. But I don't know who is the person. Okay, uh, he or her question is: How long did it take you to develop these webs? Is the web available for us to view now? Okay, uh, for the web base, I think it's around uh, eight months after that because I need to, to get the content, the video, uh, and then a, a three times, I think I have to do amendment on that. Uh, so it's around, around that, lah, around eight months after that. And currently, when now, when I open my my system, okay, uh, so it's like I mean some I mean they have a network. I don't know uh, problem with the server itself. All right, any more question from the floor? Yeah, while waiting the question from the floor, I would like to ask uh, Madam Hanita why the post uh, intervention phase was conducted one month after the discharge. Is it any uh, specific reason? Because uh, the first reason, uh, according to many studies, said that patients who are uh, short stay in the ward having this problem, it's very difficult to eliminate the physical and psychological. And uh, they are dependent to the family member to take care uh, of him or her. So th that's the reason uh, I'm choosing the first one. Number two, because... Uh, I will meet patient uh, one month after surgery. That's the standard protocol in UMMC, which is after one month uh, surgery, they have a follow-up. So it is good for me to see the patient face to pain and I will see that the progress of the patient in terms of psychological, in terms of the wound incision. So I will know about that. Yeah. And number three, the reason is uh, uh, according to the study, uh, a few studies that said Patient still having higher depression and anxiety at the uh, of this and also one month after this charge. So the reason in terms of the psychological and also is it I answer my question? Yeah, is it I answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Okay, there is one question from Professor uh, Chan from Anesthesiology Department. Sir. Do you follow on the outcome of this patient in the term of duration of hospital stay or other mortality data? Uh, 
uh, for the thank you for the question. Right? Okay, uh, we measure the uh, anxiety, depression, and also pain for the more measure it. So I think that is my uh, limit. Uh, I mean, my weakness also of my study because I'm also, I'm not I'm not measure for that. Because it's very difficult. Uh, we I I need to assess the EMR. Uh, uh, according to uh, Prof Chan, it might be depressed people might have longer duration of stay. Is it? Okay. Uh, uh, actually, within the my time period, study period, uh, I not facing with this type of uh, condition so far so far all my patient is uh, is uh, alert uh, is uh, oriented and uh, no patient uh, on anti uh, anti depression is it is it i answer the question yeah uh, this question is uh, asking by prof chan okay all and right. then the patient also, uh, the patient uh, with under uh, the patient with underlying depression is uh, excluded from my study. I, I also stated in my exclusion criteria. Okay, thank you. Any more question from the floor? Uh, okay. Uh, there is a question from Prof Chan. Okay, the treatment group may have another shorter stay compared to control. Okay, uh, all my all my patient, uh, they are same, uh, they are similar uh, duration uh, stay in the ward. Mostly patient undergoing CBG will stay around one week. Okay, two days uh, pre-operative, there was uh, they were admitted to the ward. And then uh, a post-operative around five days. So the total uh, duration stay in the ward for CABG is around one week. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Vimala. Okay, her question is, this study benefit the smartphone user. What is your suggestion for other patients who have no access or utility to use uh, this smartphone? Okay. Uh, actually, this uh, this a uh, web based education. So, uh, I uh, I can you can share all this link to all patient under uh, on Android, and also can also uh, use at the PC. So it's nothing problem. Okay. Okay. Any more question from the floor? Any burning questions, you can type in your Q&A box, yeah? Any more questions? Okay, if no question, then uh, I would like to close these sessions. Okay, uh, this is the webinar uh, 51, is the last for this year. Okay, and uh, I would like uh, to thank everyone for spending your time to attend this webinar. And have a nice day to everyone and Happy New Year to all. I see you in the next year. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you.